What's up YouTube, it's another episode of the How To Go and today we're looking at the Osmo Pocket yet again, interface tips. I'm going to go through the entire interface and show you how and what everything means and I'm going to do it as quick as possible so you can learn as much as possible. I really appreciate every single new person that's subscribing to this channel. So if you haven't subscribed already, hit the subscribe button. So let's get started with looking at the Osmo Pocket interface right now. So power on your Osmo Pocket and swipe from the right to the left. You'll see you're in photo mode and you'll see three little dots which means there's more details. There's different ratios for your photos. You can shoot in 16 by 9. Generally you could rather shoot in 4 by 3 or 3 by 2 because it gives you more data and you can crop it later. So a countdown would give you if you wanted to take a group photo. So let's do that for an example. Press the little red button and notice it counts down before it takes a photo. Let's carry on back into video mode. This is where it gets interesting. Three little dots means there's more settings for the video mode. So 4K 16 by 9, you can shoot 4K 16 by 9, 2.7K 16 by 9, and 1080p. So what do you actually want to shoot in 4K, 1080p, 2.7K? Well, generally you just shoot in 1080p. A lot of people go to 4K, but if you're uploading things to YouTube, 1080p is perfectly fine. In fact, it's like 95% of YouTube videos are uploaded in 1080p. So you shouldn't have a problem. So what does the P actually stand for in 1080p? Do you think pixels? You'd be wrong. It stands for progressive scan. And it simply means the way the image is actually drawn on the screen. It draws the lines on the screen that you see sequentially, one after the other, so you have a complete 100% image, as opposed to 1080i, which means interlace, but I won't get into that today. So, you can also shoot your frame rate, frames per second. 60 would give you a little bit of slow motion if you slowed it down in post, but 25 frames per second is fine for anything, including some cinematic type stuff. So just choose your resolution and go back and if you push record you'd actually be recording a video in 1080p 25 frames per second. Let's move on to the next settings. Slow motion, there's more little details so let's go into those dots. You can see 1080p four times and I did a little example of 1080p and if you swipe from the left you can view your clips and that shows you a very short slow motion. Let's go up into time lapse, which has three different modes. So the first one, so we see hyperlapse, motion lapse, and time lapse. Let's start with time lapse. Swipe from the left to activate it. At the bottom left, you'll see a blue button, which gives you some more settings. You can set your interval, how long it takes before it takes a photo, so every two seconds, and you can see how long the entire time lapse would take, five minutes, infinity, or even one hour if your battery lasts. Click OK when you're happy at 10 minutes, then click record it would now take a time lapse for that amount of time. We're not going to stop and show you that. You know what a time lapse is. So click again into time lapse and let's do the motion lapse, which is a little more interesting. Now what you need to do is actually see there's a one and a two. You can do two different dots. Move the gimbal head to the left to the starting position and you'll see there's a little plus on the screen. Click the little plus and that's added point one. Move the gimbal head again to the right. Click the plus on the screen and that's added point number two. Now just click OK and record. Not OK, just click record. And let it do its thing for 10 minutes. I'm not going to show you that. We're going to move on. Time lapse again. Go down to hyperlapse, which is a time lapse with movement. Kind of a walking time lapse. You can set your duration, your speed, of how quickly it actually pushes time past. I think times five is always good for this. And you can do your time lapse or hyperlapse walking wherever you need to go. Let's move forward. Panorama is actually kind of interesting. Let's start and do a 180 degree panorama. When you push record, look what happens to the gimbal head. Goes to the left, it takes one photo in the middle and one photo on the right. And then you'd have to stitch it up afterwards. Let's carry on. There's more settings on the panorama. Three by three. This is pretty cool actually. If you want to do a very large landscape photo, look what the gimbal head does. It goes to the top left, middle top, top right, and then left middle, middle middle, and then right middle, and then down left, down middle, down right. If you swipe from the left, you can see all your media and you see the three little dots, allows you to delete or add to your favorites. You can delete files. Swipe from the bottom up gives you more options. As you can see, you can recenter the gimbal, you can turn the gimbal head around. You can also 
switch it back around the other way you can do slow follow or fast follow mode by just clicking on that little button notice how much smoother the gimbal movements are this is important because you want to get smooth movements with your Osmo Pocket. You can also dial in the mode on the gimbal. You can change it to follow, which is kind of natural, tilt locked, which locks the horizon, and FPV, which pretty much gives you a first person perspective. In follow mode, the pan and tilt axis would actually follow the movements of your hand. In tilt lock, the horizon would be locked, meaning you could actually pan in that mode, and FPV, all the access are unlocked. You can pretty much do anything. So more settings if you swipe from the top down. Just click on that settings, you'll see your battery, you'll see your calibration, you'll see tilt control, which allows you to have a joystick on the screen which moves the gimbal, just leave that on, it's sometimes useful. So swipe again to the right, you'll see your storage, your accessories, it's 50 hertz everywhere else in the world for lights, so you get that anti-flicker effect, 60 hertz in America. Swipe again from the bottom down, and towards the right you'll see there's a picture in picture. If we leave that one, we see that it shows more data on the screen, but it's not what you'd actually see if you're recording 16x9. If you want to frame up your shot correctly, leave it like that, and that shows you the most natural thing to frame up your shot. If we carry on, we see AFC and AFS and then Pro Mode. I'm going to skip those and just show you the brightness settings of the screen. Just keep clicking that and you'll see if you've got a waterproof case, you can enable it over there. I don't have a waterproof case, so we'll just leave that one off. So let's go to AFC versus AFS. This is really important. AFS is generally used when there's not that much movement in your scene. Maybe there's something you want to really focus in on and you can use AFS because it'll keep your single point of focus. Especially if you tap on the screen, it'll actually track that particular object. AFC, autofocus continuous, is much better if you're moving around a lot. Sometimes it has some issues because it hunts for focus a little bit. It might try to find the particular item in the scene that has the most contrast or the most light and it might lock onto that. But in general, I just used AFC. I leave mine on AFC most of the time. Let's carry on. Very important is to enable Pro Mode on your Osmo Pocket. The Pro Mode allows you to have more features. If we're in Video Mode, for example, and we click the top left with our finger, we'll see we have Normal and Desunny Like. Desunny Like is a little bit better to grade afterwards. Normal is more bright. We can also set our exposure. If it was bright or fluorescent lighting, we could use the exposure settings to get the white balance correct. We could also click on the top left again and change the exposure from manual to automatic. And as you can see, we can go back to manual again and we can actually sh set our shutter speed. 1 over 100, 1 over 120, 1 over 200. And we can even set our ISO and see our exposure compensation at the top. So that's pretty cool for people that want to dial in their exposure. You can see your volume settings on the device and yeah, I won't go into too much there. Guys, if you found this video useful, please hit the subscribe button. I really appreciate all the people that are adding themselves to this channel and see you again next time.